you can close it out and get as much on the board as you early early on, you save yourself the hassle later down the line, which I think is is more important. Um, I also really like that we finally have maps that it is okay to pick the two side on to start. Um, <laughs> yes. I am so happy that that is finally a thing because it felt like for the longest time it was always, ah, oh, you pick CT. It's nice to have a little bit of variety. As they say, variety True. is the spice of life. But we have got a game on our hands. And if we get to see Anubis, that will be exciting. But we have two maps that stand in our way first. First of which is Mirage and will be Aurora. Kick it off on the CT side. Let's see. Already Paravision bought a large chunk of utility here to use alongside them. So far, everyone split up with two people slowly creeping through Palace and in towards Ram, while the rest of the team, including the bomb, seems to be on a mission in apartments on B. Now, they're going to be using two smokes and a flash, maybe as a fake, make a lot of noise on this A bomb site. And look at the rotation it has caused! They got a kill, and on top of that, no one's home at B. It's only Norby who only just now managed to get into market, but his head is taken off. Deco at least will get two kills, but Patsy is here, and already this gets from very dire to worse, but maybe Reassault is then the one to do it. Up against Alpha in a one versus one. No kid in hand. She's going to try and stick it. But an easy tap coming through and Paravision, they win the pistol. That is definitely a worrying sign initially from Aurora. And I get that it is only the pistol, but the fact that they were so quick to move everybody off is, is not necessarily the best tone to start a map off with. But they might come into their own, start feeling out the rounds a little bit more. They just have to be careful not to over-rotate like that any further on. We can see a, a four coming out here, though. They're happy with the number of kills that they got, so they've decided a couple of Deagles, a couple of upgraded pistols, and Riso on the MP9 here as well. And I like this from Aurora, but they are up against quite a lot of firepower from Paravision. This is not going to be around easily handed to either team. So they're taking a bit of space across the map. Once again, everyone split up for Paravision, just taking map control a step at a time, but they have to be careful, because Aurora, of course, is forcing. You never know when these digs, and especially the MP9 up on the close angle, where they're going to be coming from. I mean, technically, they can't really predict that they are forcing, but I do see the Patsy got tagged up, so they definitely need to be a bit careful. Lackey does fall. An alpha. Ooh, the timing. It's not quite going to be working in his favor. Result actually turned around at the perfect time. Grabs alpha and makes this perhaps a bit more likely that Aurora can make this force work. But Patsy continues to destroy this defense up on this A side and pretty much it's left completely open. All the other three remaining players are very far eliminated from the bomb site. Do take up Patsy for a bit. But other than that, I think it's just going to have to be a save. Yeah, keep hold of what you have. They forced into this and they are going to have next to no money working in their favor going into round number three. Bomb is down. There isn't a kit available either. This is so far gone. They've just got to hope that Paravision don't go hunting for this. The bomb plant, maybe they can afford to send somebody. They have a suspicion that they've got a couple more weapons and have been let on. But I don't think Norway's seen very much action. So... I don't think they know there's an MP9. I don't think they're going to risk it. Yeah, timer just going to take on down there. We're all going to hold that position. It is going to be all three of them left alive heading into round number three. But lovely round for Paravision to pick up. They completely shut down what was a, sort of a force buy there. Not much of one. And there's going to be no money available on Aurora to try support those saved over weapons. So it's going to be very mishmash, very messy on this one as well. Maybe buy a little bit of utility, but I'm hoping to see maybe something a little bit faster, a little bit spicy out of Aurora here. Try catch Paravision off guard, or they themselves haven't managed to fully upgrade all of those rifles. I'm not sure, but I think that window smoke completely missed, and yeah. well, it doesn't seem to matter. Alpha still is good for a kill. You know, if window 
Casino is uh, going to be not going to be smoked. You might as well just grab a kill instead. And to be fair, it is up against still those saved weapons and a couple pistols around it, leaving just Norby as the last player standing. He's not too far separated up the action, and there's a couple players very low. So who knows what an MP9 can still do for the time just waiting for the smoke to fade. Maybe we'll be granted a gift over towards middle if. We have Alpha peeking, who is quite low, in fact. They've got him pinched on it. Yeah, no so they're already go. wrapping through. They they pretty much know what time it is. Yeah, Norway, unfortunately, I don't see it living through this one. Uh, everywhere he wants to go, there is somebody hiding in wait for him. Unfortunately, that long range is not ideal. Shoulder has been spotted, tapped away by Alpha. Beautiful positioning, no survivors for Aurora Gaming, and a third round in the row to Paravision. Now, the slight problem they've got here is that they haven't lost some of these a little, so they're still rocking three of them. They really do uh, need to either pick up some of the uh, A4s or A1Ss in this round, uh, or maybe lose a couple of players in the pursuit of more rounds, and then we get to see those upgrades coming through. But uh, what I'm seeing so far is really nice from Paravision. They're not getting ahead of themselves. But the real challenge comes in this round. Proper buy from Aurora. We see the orb out on Deco. Of course, Arcadia player to watch of the series. So this one is going to be a really nice one for Aurora to pick up if they can. Paravision. This is still feeling like a bonus for them. They do want to see if they can execute. But so far, a lot of fire heading their way in need as well. Oh, and the need is so juicy, so much damage, and Resol can now just continue with the cleanup game. Kenzie comes and chimes in, and Resol, we need to be a bit careful. It's going to be swinging. Oh, and the timing is perfect. Patsy looks away, and that means it's just Art Frost. This time, the Executor Paravision slowed and eventually shut down by Aurora. What a round this was beautifully done Aurora flawless round to kick themselves into gear as well we said that uh, maybe we've seen a little bit of worrying signs from them the previous but that is the statement round to try get things back underway it does look like we might have a little bit of a technical issue to sort out quickly but give us a little bit of time to look at the buys we see Arp Frost out on that warp as well finally able to match the firepower of Deco but uh, I'm, I'm very excited about this one. This is our first, it feels like our first proper gun round, right? With everyone on yeah. fully upgraded rifles and the orps out, full utility. I think this is going to be a round that helps us figure out a little bit where some of the weaknesses are as well. Uh, and Aurora, they just look very clean on that one. We talked about the utility softening them up and just allowing Resalt to just mow them down, really. And that is where we're going to need to see Paravision step up, is that their utility game, Aurora, is so, so strong. If they're not able to bring that same level of firepower uh, in the sort of throwable department, then we will see them start to flounder a little bit. Sure, pause it seems here. Probably a bit of a tech issue, I assume. I think we've got Norway back in the game. Yeah. So hopefully not going to be too much longer. There's one thing that will never change. The map pool can change. Vertigo can change. <laughs> There's one thing that won't ever. And that will be uh, CS2 and tech issues. It's uh... And bugs. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But, you know, it's it's familiar. It's consistency, right? Us yeah. casters harp <laughs> on and on about consistency. And then we complain when it doesn't go in our favor, you know? <laughs> oh, no. Oh. No, that's well, a bad restart. sign. That is... No, this is, no, this is fine. This is just a round restart. So just True, making sure yeah. everyone's money is in check. Everyone's buying up. And the timer continues to go down. So seems to be everyone is set. Uh, we can kick round number five right off. Immediately, smoke's being thrown into middle yet again. Only one player who's going to be, from what it seems, lurking in A. And immediately pushed out of middle. Ooh. But nope, getting caught off guard. Completely blind with a flash from Alpha. And Paravision continue on with their hunt down in middle. I do, you know, I, I definitely appreciate the switch of pace from Aurora. But there was no backup flashes. And I guess that you till that Paravision threw in 
definitely not ready for a player like that. That was aggressive and so ballsy. They do have to try getting back out of that position, though. You know, throwing a couple of nades back, sight, try low and him just a little bit. Not for us, as you can see, has taken a third of his health. He's still very much pinned at top mid there. A little bit of support from Patsy, but going to have to back away there as Lackey. As Riso up in ladder as well, they have got lockdown on mid. But it's over to B that they've got to be worried. And as you can see, they've moved everyone off a little bit. I mean, there's definitely still a player close up and short. And I think maybe Lackey is then one to sort of be in a quick rotate position. But definitely a lot of pressure up on Resalt. Has a pretty good angle. Knows there's a smoke there. Now we can see all the util hit does. Have to look away from the flashes. Maybe now an opportunity that can rise and follow up flash and burns in. Oh, the fire. And look at how low so many of these players are. Such good damage, but the kills feed seems to be raining yellow. And yeah, there's just nothing you can do. You've just won a round. Your loss bonus is down the bin. You just gotta save, especially with an all player all invested into. That barrage of utility was just absolutely beautiful because they'd accounted for Van, they'd accounted for Pillar, uh, and they actually double accounted for Pillar because they threw the flashes over, they followed it up with a Molotov as well. Um, a beautiful execute coming out there. And there's not really much that you could do just as Riso on his own. Um, he tried his best, as you can see, trying to fight in the flames, but really just not having any opportunity there. Um, Aurora, yeah... A little bit of a difficult one for them, as you said. They had that player cat to rotate short, but there was a lot of pressure on just him. Uh, even with another player on, I think the exec was just so well done, it wouldn't particularly have mattered. Uh, they do have the money to rebuy into this as well. We saw able to pass over the orc back to Deco there. But Paravision, uh, we want to change your pace. We've got to change your pace. We talked about how their utility game is going to need to be on point to keep up with Aurora and look at the execute we got. So actually, uh, I'm starting to waver a little bit. I know it's early days, but my prediction is trembling already. Yeah. I mean, typically, of course, Mirage very back and forth, very 50. So far, good signs coming through out of Paravision. Aurora, though, have another shot. Trying to hold back this A bomb side. Maybe a kill for a smoke will do. Now Nate fades away. Definitely an opportunity. And Decker will strike with that. Alfredo close up in connector. Does get one. Beltronic finds a result as well. So now numbers are kept somewhat even. Oh, and this can be the play. Kenzie wrapped all the way around. And it's Paravision who's currently stalled. Can't move. Oh, and here it comes. Trigger discipline at its finest. Finding one. Oh, almost uh, whipping there a little bit. But Altronic, of course, hears that. But doesn't want to reveal his position. Waits for the perfect timing. I think he might have spotted the player up in jungle. Oh, and timing's going to be everything. Who are you going to be shooting, for? shooting at first? And it's Kenzie, the one to work off of that. Very well done. Honestly, the timing on a quick rotate, Aurora being decisive. And that's what wins them the round. Very, very nice wrap there, as you pointed out. It just forces them out into the open. It keeps uh, Bellatronic, of course, trapped up there in Palace. Really nowhere to go. Allows for this incredible crossfire to be established as well. Kenzie had me on edge there, whiffs the shot, and if he had lost that, could easily have swung the other way there, puts it into a 2v2, but doesn't. And I like this, jumping down early into underpass. They've got a lot of presence there. They've actually doubled up. Although, maybe a little bit of worry. They've got to fight their way back out of underpass, and there's already a player pushed up chair and top mid, but kills go tit for tat, but Paravision immediately too quick in succession to even the numbers back out in their favor. Look at that two-player advantage. Gigat low, hobbling even, but Norway on site. Presence alone going to deter them. But their map is their stage, and there is anywhere that they can perform right now. It seems like Aurora want to stick together here. Oh, very little information to work with. Let me just hope that the one smoke that's up in the apartments can hold them back. For now, just gambling up on A, but no one crossing for a middle either. No information up until probably the point where Paravision is going to be playing.
planting that bomb. Yeah, there's really nothing that Aurora can do at this one. I think they're out of utility. But they have a smoke. I really don't think that's going to be the difference maker. And with them being so far away from the situation, I think Paravision, they're just going to nicely sweep this one under the rug and continue on. As she said, it can be a little bit back and forth. Them getting those early on rounds does set them in a better position with that game of tug of war. But ultimately, just Aurora going to be saving the weapons on this. And Paravision, I'm really liking the firepower that I'm seeing from them. It feels like Aurora, they've got some nice ideas. We've seen some really nice plays like with individuals rapping and stuff. But also, there's a couple of these plays that are lacking in the firepower department. Paravision seems to be firing on all cylinders. Aurora Gaming, you've got Norway who hasn't found anything in the kills department just yet. And Lackey on only one. It's really just been Resalt that's been leading the charge on that front. Whereas Paravision seems to be a little bit more evenly spread. More people stepping up. And just seem to have that fire behind them. Now in a classic Mirage fashion, you need to find conversions. Because if not, I feel a map can very easily just sort of slip away. Economy is yeah. so important on a map like this with how back and forth it can go. Now, at least with two save weapons and sort of the lost bonus that is that was already built up in the earlier stages, they kind of fallen out of buy. But there's definitely a lot of pressure riding up on Aurora because eventually their money is going to be running dry. And you want to get as many rounds on the board as you can up in this first half. We're already in round eight, of course. Now, want to get aggressive once again. It needs to be very careful, but this time it does pay off. There's another play around, though, but she's dealt with. Resol jumps up top. Now Deco under pressure, but seems to deal with it perfectly fine. Beltrona continues the fight, though. Doesn't want to let this site slip away. Hopes for a bit more, and is granted a bit more. A lovely free kill through the smoke. Deco repositioned, though. Spots the gun barrel. Oh, but time is going to be everything. At least his teammate comes to help out. Beltronic falls, and it's only Arthros that is left. Yeah, difficult position to fight from here as well. You've got one on each side. And whilst they do kind of allow for the fights to be isolated a little bit, close enough that an immediate trade would have come through if he even dared to fire off that wall. But as we said, Aurora coming back a little bit, trying to keep it close, not letting these rounds to the boy, but conversions, you said, the name of the game. And Aurora just haven't really been able to find that. They've been few and far between the rounds and Power Vision. Able to buy right back in, even with Lost Bonus being a little bit iffy. Lacking some of the utility we'd like to see from them, however. So, hopefully Aurora can use that to their advantage here. Deco, go to aggressive on mid, has been smoked off. Just going to have to back away here. And they are putting all of their attention on mid here. A little bit of a presence coming out from Alpha towards A, but mid... So much presence in the Dark Frost with the opening pick. No trade to come through. Kenzie, tiny weeny window of smoke there. But not much to work with. The trade's beautiful. Actually, swinging it back onto even numbers there as Norway finds Kicker as well. Bella Chonok. Ooh. Ooh. That's a I massive th kill. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought he had that one in the bag. But unfortunately, that is their advantage going. That's it. Gotta need to be hot on the trigger here. But Lackey, it's absolutely perfect. Alpha does manage to trade. But so much left on his shoulders, and that is the conversion we were asking for. Exactly. I love this aggression. Aurora really leaving them with no space to breathe. And the way they're able to find good trade. Honestly, Lackey, he was, I guess, lacking a little bit in the earlier stages. But these two kills that he was able to get in the middle were absolutely disgusting. Aim on a point, and with that conversion found. And... With that, also, the economy broken for Perivision. So, whereas, you know, we thought the consistency we were seeing, um, I guess, you know, the money eventually does run dry. And this leaves room for a tied-up scoreline. It does indeed. Unless we see something absolutely horrific come out. But the combination of the nade and Deco's orb is not going to allow for that. Kicker does find one. Not even allowed to pick up the weapon, however, as Riso on the trade goes for some more as well they line up for him he just holds down the trigger and gets three as well the spray control impeccable and the round i'd say also impeccable all right last stages here 
of that very first half. A quick replay of two rounds ago, in fact. Yeah, this is just lovely stuff here. The Modan as well, Resalt doing absolutely amazing. Up on 14 kills, only seven deaths. Who's over on the side of Paravision? Um, yeah, 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 but um, I guess I'm thinking that is a bit more of a strong suit for Paravision is how evenly distributed it is. Everyone's sort of doing their fair bit, whereas if Restall, for example, can't quite get going, that could be a bit more of a problem now. Well, yet again, Aurora lose their opening player up in middle, and no way for them to fight back or find a trade. So you can see them getting perhaps a bit impatient. I see a Restall maybe lurking over towards Ramp, wanting to peek and get aggressive. And maybe he has an opportunity at hand. There are a couple players around the corner, but nope. Gets completely out-aimed. Beltronic, of course, ready for someone to swing. And with that, two players already here in advantage. Lack it, of course. All right. Guess the aggression just doesn't stop. And with that, he can upgrade from an MP9 up into a rifle. But Beltronic is already creeping through the side. Uh, not quite checking. Default. So, I guess with that, numbers are made even again. Yeah, that felt like a really weird push there. Like, the team's over towards B, and yes, he wants to hold that advanced position, but he just kept creeping forward and forward, and there were so many people waiting on that site for him. Can't help but feel maybe a little aggressive on his own with absolutely uh, no benefit to his death there. Not even much information that's even relevant anymore. Badsy up close, spots the elbow, luckily gets the kill as well. Does manage to jump through the window on the retreat, Deco. In hot pursuit, however, not going to be playing with that orb. Beautiful flash, not quite going to be capitalized upon just yet. He'll be allowed to live for a second longer. Trying to spot out something, anything, an advantage to try help Lackey as he pushes from catwalk. Try to split up their attention, there's a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of info found, but Art Frost going to take him on down. Now just Deco with that orb. I mean, he will get away with one more kill, but... No that round. round was a bit painful, to be fair, with uh, just just trying to peek and then with a molly uh, and taking the incendiary in hand and that sort of dying. <laughs> it's all... Uh-oh, wait. It can get even more troublesome. Whoa! Deku got an insane shot with a pistol, but unfortunately dies to the bomb. I hate to see it. But at least the money is somewhat okay here for the final round of the half. Maybe... Okay, actually, they can afford an orb. They can. Maybe someone has to sacrifice for an SMG then, but at least they can squeeze that by. But this is, oh. I mean, Deco doing pretty solid. Resalt as well. But the rest is maybe not clicking as much as of yet. No, we're still stuck, and that's one kill. It's actually Paravision here is going to be using their tactical timer, really making, or trying to make sure that they're going to find a conversion and not end up 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, 6-6 six, six would be ideal for Aurora, maybe. I feel like they might have wanted a little bit more out of this. But, Paravision 6-6, six, six, I think they'll take it. They're going on to, of course, the favoured side of their map pick, so I'm, I'm expecting good things from them. Um, they are lacking a little bit. They've got a Galil still out, which, you know, never quite ideal, and there's a lot of utility missing. As you can see, they're playing a little bit more passively because of it. Kenzie trying to take the space as well. Got a little bit of backup from Deco in the window, but the smoke just means there's not going to be much use if he gets singled out here. There's no one there to support from short eye. I think only just now Resol comes in. Oh, and has to look away from the flash, but Resol gets two. Almost a third, but Patsy does strike and makes the numbers even yet again. If Resol doesn't get two there, that is a disaster. And they and it's only because they kind of line up for him. That could have gone a lot, lot worse for Aurora, I think. But 3v3. Patsy on a, a little bit of health taken off of him, but nothing really to write home about. Deco with this orb actually has a perfect position, whether he knows it or not. Once that smoke fades, it's going to be a little bit of a thorn in the backside of Paravision. A lot of pressure here up on Deco. Three players about to come his way. At least there can be quick rotations coming through from short. Oh, but already tagged up. At least a flash to delay it just a bit more. Maybe we'll hoping for another point of contact. Oh, that is way too deep. Kicker can already 
go and push through. And a bomb that's going to be planted within no time. Norby is close. Was, of course, on the, up on that short position now. How much can he do? Can he find a way back into the round? Spotted now. Quick scope. Not quite landing. Oh, he might oh, almost line up. Still, no shot hit here for Ardfrost. As the CTs creep closer. Not shot again. Oh, and it just continues. Lackey finds the kill and Art Frost completely chokes. And with that, it is a 6-6 six six half. An even scoreline is where we left off, and that is exactly where we will pick back up 6-6 six, six on the scoreboard for Paravision versus Aurora on map number one of this series. Now, uh, it's very exciting, and this is going to be an important pistol round. Paravision, they struggled a little bit to put rounds together at times, and a lot of individuals are struggling to get on the scoreboard early on, but seem to be coming into their own. Can they find this opening round and start this half off on a better foot? Paravision, similar like how Aurora was getting aggressive up on the CT side. They want to do the same thing. But at the same time, Aurora chooses this B bomb side. Bell trying to kick it. This duo so far does pretty well, but Lackey does hope to find a little bit more. Try to crack open this bomb side. Getting peaked left and right, though. Uh, not going to happen. Deco, his head is off as well. And it is Paravision with now two pistol rounds under the name. It is indeed a good way to kick off the series, taking both of those all-important pistols. Uh, I'd say even more important in CS2 than they've been in previous uh, renditions of this game. And it continues to do so even with some of the economic changes. But 
Fire Vision that gives them the ability to buy up. And Aurora, not enough kills, not a bomb plant. So they are unfortunately going to be stuck on naught but pistols. Uh, one Deagle and a P250 in the mix as well. But very aggressive here from Aurora. Already pushing the extremities of this A site. A little bit of a poke and a prod. But Paravision, they've seen nothing mid. They've got to have an idea that there's going to be something going on towards A here. Oh. Uh, that's a spicy kill. Pat simply hold his ground. Seems like that one pistol kill is sort of where it will be stuck at. Um, actually, no, two pistol kills. Uh, but that, that opening was absolutely disgusting um and i guess you know that's sort of the most that you can get if you're aurora here was in the most optimal buy and most it was an upgraded pistol um but they kept to play um conservative and with that they have cash now to buy up for this next round so you lose two but close enough to still make this second half work deco not an orb just yet Gonna stick to the scout for now. And let's see, Paravision is uh, immediately calling their second timeout. And they keep doing so after having like wins, but having still an important round to come up next. So they know they have a bit of wiggle room, but they want to stay ahead. So timeout through. I think that's the first uh, tactical timeout that we've seen of the match so far. Even at times where I feel like maybe team. Could have used it, and Deco on the scout here, just really eager to sort of itch that trigger finger on the sniper rifle, but not quite got the money for the full version. On a little bit of a, I don't, I don't, I, I'm trying to think of what the, because we call it B Tech version in the UK. But I feel like that's not a, a universal phrase. On the Wish version of the the sniper rifle. There we go. But look at that lovely opening pick. Actually goes traded and Beltronic, beautifully done. Does spot that there is another person there. Spots, spots the weapon switch out. Finds another kill and really has just shot this round down single-handedly. Waiting for the right timing. Oh, head spotted. But okay, Art Frost has his back. Kick it, not in trouble. Tries to creep a bit closer, perhaps. Just to really sandwich them and lock them in up in apartments. But maybe the aggression is going to be hurting him. Oh, and now he has been spotted. Of course, it is just Kenzie by himself. But that could have gotten a bit wrong. Or like a bit sidetracked. Just a little bit. But Kenzie left on his lonesome think got to take the seconds also again look at Aurora again we talked about how it feels like Resalt has sort of been carrying this team a little bit Norby has only found two frags the entire map so far and we are well over halfway through the map I say that unless we go several overtimes in which case we are only a fraction of the way <laughs> through the map but this is a nice little lead for Paravision to be taking. We saw them do exactly the same thing on their T side. Is they got that nice little three round win streak to kick them off. And then a little bit more back and forward from there on in. But they gave themselves that boost at the start. Uh, which really set them off on a good tone. And we see that happening again here. Where they just seem to be having a little bit of a slow start to these halves. And they need to ramp it up a little bit. And it's going to be same case scenario here as well. We can already see the tech lines coming out. They're not really going to have the money for everything that they need here. And Beltrana single-handedly at top mid, mid on his own there. Closing out the round very early on. And there's really not much saving that Aurora could do after that. I mean, there's definitely a large investment coming through in this round. Kenzie with that one rifle and the rest up on upgraded pistols. Armor behind it as well. So they definitely hope to squeeze something out of this. Of course, the time is starting to tick with Paravision being on 9 already. So I can see uh, as to the reason why. It's going to be flashing out. Patsy is uh, a bit confused. I'm not too sure where that fire actually hit as well. <laughs> but Norway takes the opportunity 
And with the smokes that are currently up, this should or can potentially lead to a bomb plant. But there's already a lot of flights falling. The smokes are now gone. And they're trying to just sort of run, try to get it ahead and, and hope to grab an advantage. Get maybe a weapon in the mix, but Lackey gets punished and Kick It just continues the hunt. Lands a kill on both of them and locks in double digits. That was a very chaotic round there. Um, I don't know if we've got a replay of it, but Beltronic getting absolutely smacked in the face by an HE. Um, I, I don't know if we... It might be here. I think it's hitting there. No. Unfortunately, we don't. But uh, very chaotic round. And it got very close there for Aurora. I like what they were thinking. They managed to take that control. Uh, Lackey with some nice little drive-by shootings there to try even the numbers a little bit. But... Just a big weapon disadvantage. They got a foothold onto site, couldn't really capitalize off the back of it. And again, they just don't really have a great buy here once more. Utility lacking, weaponry not fully up to par either. Lackey taking a huge chunk of damage off the bat. Paravision, these early rounds just swinging so heavily in their favor. And Aurora constantly having to try bring it back and somehow uh, stop the hemorrhaging every single round. Yeah, and... While we're already like a, a good chunk of the round in, it's very little space taken by Aurora being very passive. Maybe that smoke can help them out, but there's a cheeky spray coming through, keeping them at bay. Being very hesitant. Now Deco just manages to get through the top box. Is almost an opportunity at hand. I do like the idea. And a flash on top will force uh, Paravision to take a step back. But how much more can Aurora do? They have all five alive. Slowly taking space bit by bit. Ideally, you want to see if you can deal with that ladder player. Kick it. Oh, and this one might be so good. No one's paying attention to him. That's the first. Almost gifted another. He knows they're both there, There we though. go. Ooh. Oh, okay. Deco finds a lovely double, but time certainly is ticking. 25 seconds left on the clock. Pat is still to be cleared, and he stands tall. Oh, Frost lands a lovely shot, and Resalt still had to pick up the bomb. Now there's only 15 seconds left. No Yuta on his back. There's, there's no honestly time. no way he can go to the site. No, not going to be happening. Having to go get the bomb as well, and the fact that he was going to have to push onto a site that he could not clear, and that he knew was fully stacked as well. That round was, was over the moment that he was left alone there. And that is an 11th round, one away from at least securing overtime, two away from stealing their map. Uh, well, technically it's their own map pick, but stealing it away nonetheless from Aurora. And they put up a little bit of a fight here and there, but once again, the weaponry going to be lacking. Timeout being called and it's very much needed here because they are starting to run out of any room to work with here. They have got one more round after this to play with and actually they're gonna force into this one try stop them getting 12. yeah we went from a 6-6 half to 11-6 now and yep. already at nine you know we, we were thinking about the clock is ticking or already needs to fight back and so far they're left completely empty-handed there's a couple of double kills continuously coming through but again norway Having just three kills and we're around number 18. That's a very worrying sign. Deco doing well, Riesel doing well, but the rest is very quiet. You can't just rely on two players. Whereas on the opposite side, Paravision, very equal in the kill department. But Deco does continue to do wonders, opens things up. But then we have someone like Kenzie who's just walking out of ramp, unsupported. Somehow Norway does get that. The kicker not quite done with us yet. She tries to get a bit more, but no. Resalt shuts it down, and Aurora, but they very much need a round. They get back on the board. That felt like a very messy round from Paravision. It felt a little bit rushed, a little bit like they got ahead of themselves there. Um, just pushing, getting a bit over aggressive. And Aurora Gaming gonna punish that every day of the week. Uh, but that was their first round of the half. Paravision able to almost fully buy back to the same level of power and they do have kicker on that mp9 there with little utility however rest of the team looking strong we're recording another time out there they won that round they do really need to convert though and that's something that they struggled with at the beginning of their first half
they got a little bit better as it went on but this is one that they really need to because they cannot be affording to concede these rounds they really really need to piece something together close that gap but yeah no no uh, we really need to see some more kills on uh norway i think and it's it's always difficult because you never really want to single out one player because of course say uh, you know live as a team die as a team but always as a team but four kills in 18 rounds is it's you know you can do the maths that's not very many kills deco slowly apprehensively checking paravision haven't been too particularly concerned on their ct side with underpass and He's going to give Aurora quite a bit of space to work with here. The flash is, however, perfect. Alpha, got to be careful, though. That is not a fight you want to be taking. Mackie, waiting. Paravision, they've been getting really apprehensive. They've been getting ahead of themselves. Over-aggression, going to be punished. And Alpha, trying to find something. Be careful, because there's a lot of people waiting for you, and you don't want to make yourself a second casualty untraded. I'm pretty sure Biltronic passed on the information that there must be a player very low. So Alpha continues to stick there, quite aggressive, but at least the smoke sort of gives him a free pass to um, exit away again. Sort of play with two players on a site. And just hope that your defense is going to be strong enough. Art Frost has been doing pretty well on the op hold from Jungle, for example, and they might gamble. Okay. Bit of repositioning is happening. Now there's a double. Two players, in fact, here into CET, and I guess the gamble is paying off. Smokes are raining. Everyone is gathering up here from Aurora, and time is going to be ticking. R Frost again strikes from the CT. Patsy up close and personal lands. Almost three kills. Alpha finds his latter, and now it's just Lackey, the one with free HP, who has no choice but to run away. And I think they are sending Art Frost hunting for this as well. They really don't want to let that orb get away because they know that money has got to be on the ropes for them as well. That's the ground more than secure. And they do it in such a dominant fashion. Aurora got to be stopping to have a look at this as well. Five in a row needed for overtime. And they have not been anywhere close to that number of rounds consecutively this entire map so far. But Patsy there, beautiful individual moment. Spray transfer completely under his control. And that is map point. Again, Aurora struggling to find conversions. And it's history repeating itself. That very first half, they did manage to find a way back. But that was up on CT, I guess, a bit more desirable. And now on T, they can't seem to get off of the ground. Deco at least, maybe can. Beltronic again, the first one, two, four for Paravision. It gets a bit messy. Flashes do their job and almost kill two players on the back of that. But last round as well, we saw Paravision crawl back after an opening loss. Dude. We still have Kick at full HP up on the site. And if he can get a double kill here, it could all spiral out of hand. And how aggressive does he want to be? How proactive? Timing. Ooh. Okay, I think Kicker there is quite lucky, to be fair, that he's still got a kill, because he got dinged straight through the wall. Patsy now here to help out alongside Alpha, but trades continue to be there. Now it's just Patsy and Art Frost. It's Art Frost, who's already here, Mark, but needs to wait for his teammate to come through. Sure, he's a bit passive, because he knows there's a player around the corner. The blue retake is going to be so, so difficult for them as well. And now they'll know that they're both orbs. They do manage to find the first there. Switch over. And Norway taken down was trying to hide. That is going to be the defuse. And that is going to be the map to... Oh, <laughs> Paravision. Just beautifully done. Absolutely. Well, wow, that's 13-7. And what a dominant second half this has been. This was absolutely wild. And honestly, I wasn't expecting this to happen. I really thought that Aurora could take this map. And with, you know, the track record that they've been having, they've only dropped two maps in 22 occasions. And now this is a third added to the list. And it's Paravision to do so. Very well done. And it seems like, you know, it's just when they have a full veto of maps, that there are sort of cards in their deck already. But as you can see, we are getting into Nuke here.
the Cedar Creek nuclear power plant awaits us. Um, I remember I, I'd be, I've been playing this, uh, playing this game for years and years and was genuinely convinced that Cedar was pronounced Cheddar. Um, we burst <laughs> their, we burst their 22 year old <laughs> bubble on that one. Um, yeah. <laughs> they were not best pleased when they found out that they'd been mispronouncing it, but Cedar Creek Power Plant is where we will be kicking this map off and we will see whether Anubis is on our horizons, our Paravision, if they can steal away the pistol and start this map off as they did the previous map with both pistol rounds giving them a three or four round more of them struggle war they are really nice they are rushing around kick that knows that he is in trouble and is just gonna back away with measure and away we go quick pace up into the ramp everyone is here but so is a bunch of cts ready to fight alpha grabs the first and the door <laughs> that's where all the action is at kenzie finds a double right back and maybe paravision uh, they're going to get overwhelmed now. Patsy can't connect either. And um, yeah, it's all a little bit tricky. We have almost a team kill there as well. And Bell Chornok has been dealt with. So good damage. But honestly, getting perhaps a bit too aggressive there. And getting punished. That was, um, I was going to say, a hunting pack there from Aurora. You know, play as a team, die as a team, always as a team. We said that earlier. I'm very much taking that one to heart. But it does mean that they are going to get their first pistol round of the series so far. Albeit we are only on map number two, so that's maybe not the greatest achievement in the world. But this was one that I think they really needed to secure. And of course, stopping Paravision from finding too much as well means that they aren't even going to buy uh, anything more than a flash here. Heavy outside focus here coming through from Paravision. No one actively there. Just that one smoke. The eyes are kept up. And Norway then keeping them even further busy. Does have backup. So maybe an opportunity here ahead. But Norway is already here to wrap around. Belton at least will get one kill. But not before everyone else is wiped away. This is what we like to see. Keep the damage at a minimum. So, conversion found. And Aurora kicking things off strong. And especially, keep in mind, over on Mirage, it was Paravision winning both pistols. Yeah, this is a nice way to uh, kick it off. Got to see them continue this on as well. They won't be issued quite the same third round. Aurora, they were liking to force up, even on the pistol rounds they didn't win. Which, when they lost them, did put them at an extra round disadvantage. Actually, very evenly spread here on round number three. Patsy having a look. Can see the door has been blown off the hinges. Alpha, lovely little peek. And it's going to go untraded. That smoke going to mean the resoul has died alone. Now, Patsy has sort of left outside to the walls a bit here. So there will be a lot of space to take. But Kenzie doesn't even check him. He's hiding in the smoke. Still no one found. Well, now they have. Kick it does fall. It's all a bit awkward. Everyone being so close. And oh, peekaboo. Alpha says hello. And the aggression does pay off at first here with another kill upon Deco as well. Slowly but surely separating all these T's from one another. Norway outside. But his teammate very far away over towards B. Yeah. And a bomb dropped as well in a completely different part of the map as well. <laughs> yeah, that is going to be a very difficult one to retrieve. That is out in, I say no man's land, very much Paravision's land there. Kenzie doesn't really want to peek up ladder, especially knowing that's where the bomb is. Knowing that there's going to be a lot of people guarding it. Now, the fact that they've split up, there's no information on where they are now. So Paravision, they don't have sort of quite the information game. Now. That's the only thing Aurora's got going is this sort of mystery of surprise in the wind. But with 20 seconds left, I think this round way too far gone. They are just holding on to these weapons. And Power of Vision not in a place financially. They want to go hunting for this either. Just going to stick on. Hold on tight. They know the round is theirs. There's no reason for them to get apprehensive. I just got to stick to the weapons you've got. 
course, two in a row. There's a bit of money here to work with for Aurora. This is a very nice round from Paravision. Only having that single loss on a buy round. A first buy, in fact, is a good result. Yeah, you not stay too bad. Stay close, uh, within close range of your opponent as well. Yeah, not too bad at all. Paravision, it's their time to try and convert off the back of this. If they can win another one, they buy themselves a tiny bit of breathing room to work with here. Aurora, if they can bite right back into this, stop Paravision finding anything, it is going to be devastating for their economy. Patsy, a lot of early aggression, spots out the shoulder, takes down the kill. The smoke blossoms to keep him safe as well, and that is going to be another opening pick. Untraded for Paravision. Genty taking a lot of space outside, somewhere that Paravision have been a little hesitant to keep their grip on. Always drop down, most certainly going to have been heard by someone. Okay. And again, it is a very strong start from Paravision, immediately shutting down big chunks of the map nice. and slowing slowing Aurora here in the team play. Kenzie managing to get down secret is going to cause them a couple of problems as well because suddenly there's that little bit of a backstab, that little bit of a pincer that they can work with and it'll draw the attention away as well. Well, they do have some lobby control, and Paravision actually being very civil, letting them take the space, giving them a lot of respect here. But they're just content to do so, make Aurora play into them, and wait for them to make the mistakes work well for them last round, and it looks like it's going to be continuing on in such a vein. Ooh, it's a lovely opening, and they want to get down the vent... Get the lead while they're at it. And still, numbers made even Kenzie's position. This is the prime time to shine and his corner's not checked. That is another follow-up and now it's all down to Patsy. The door at least is open. That's a good chance that he can scrape through. But Kenzie is on a hunt for more. Wraps around, hits the timing and shuts everything down. You were already mentioning how his position can be crucial for Aurora finding a way back into the round, and it did pay off. That it did indeed. Exciting times. That's a really, really strong one for Aurora to be picking up there, because as you can see, the money on Paravision is going to be... Uh, I don't really want to use the word abysmal, but it's not good, to say the least. And there's not really much that they can do here. They've been playing very passively. I think this is the sort of round that they switch it up. Maybe they have a little bit of a push outside, try and get an idea for how they've been working. But they are actually going to continue to play it quite slowly. Hold tight angles. Veltronic has been spotted. Still alive, actually. Has managed to take Ressel down fairly low, but not able to confirm the kill. Patsy slowly crawling up vent. Not able to find anything at all. Decimated. On the climb out there and now kicker taking a large chunk of damage as well alpha finds one in the meantime but also going to be feeling the burn taken down by kenzie looking the wrong way completely and it is going to be clean from aurora just kicker left with that deagle and i think he's going to struggle to find anything deco gonna be the one to take him on it down and that's a very clean round for aurora to be winning this is night and day as to what we saw them end off mirage with So far, a very strong start here from Aurora up on T-side. Paravision. Yet again, another buy. Last time around, you know, that very first buy, it looked solid. They had the right ideas into place. But finding conversions is really what a struggle was at. So, time to see if this round is going to be any different. Dumping util up in the right places. But, so far, outside pushes seem to be coming through. Lovely nade just tickles Lackey and Norby a bit. At least keeps them a bay of red books for the time being. Oh, a cheeky booze up top. Oh, they need to be so careful. Deco gets tagged down to 32. He's honestly lucky to be alive. Yeah, very lucky there. And they've taken a lot of damage early on. Damage is not killed, so there's still a chance for them very much to swing this round. Especially if they can overwhelm Alpha here, which I have a slight feeling they might be able to. Alpha catches wind of what is going on. Might just want to retreat back onto the site here. This is not a fight he wants to take. There we go. Fall back. Going to jump up into Rafters. Nice position to be holding. Actually, Lackey going to get caught a little bit by the edge of the Molotov. That might have been heard. 
Once again, Aurora, they've been taking it very, very slowly on this T side. Playing carefully, trying to just slowly, systematically take this map control. Not we're going to leave the bomb behind, not wanting to take it as he pushes on and tries to find any information on this site. Voldenoy's help. There's a little bit of a crossfire established here, but Art Frost has got to be careful. He's been tagged out. He's being held at bay by the flames as well. It's going to be the HE to take him on down, and suddenly Alpha left on his lonesome once more. Well, they could easily get back up, though. Resalt has a good angle up on A. In fact, clears everything out. Now, two players up in heaven. They need to be the hero. The amount of damage that comes through is absolutely nuts, and it's Patsy and Kick it to finish it off. Very decisive on the fast rotation, and whew, that got scary for a sec. Aurora trying to make the best out of that, but no, getting shut down, and immediately Paravision is like, okay, we need a timeout. That was close, perhaps too close for comfort. We need a couple more on the board in order to fully bounce back. That they do. Art Frost still on that orb. Not really had too much success for it. They shut him down very effectively that previous round. Uh, just the barrage of utility just couldn't live through it. Um, but beautifully held on by Alpha. Just the positioning there. Held down B side almost single handedly. Forced them to head back up to A. Or a team just holding their positions, waiting for the chance to strike. And they're actually very well read there. We have to give credit where it's due. Very well read from Pyrofish and Aurora. As you can see, um, actually maybe not the strongest buy. I thought it was going to be two pistols for a second. Kenzie did have an AK on the floor waiting for him. However, Deco just on that Tech 9, and he's sort of been the star of this team. So he is not going to have much to work with on his department. So again, outside just conceded. They've been letting Aurora just run away with themselves out here. But he's sort of been semi having a look a little bit, but the smoke is just devastating. It's the information. Very important kill here. Immediately shuts down Lackey. They can at least find a rifle to try and fight with. But keeps going very back and forth. That's a double kill, in fact. Oh, and Norby has found timings outside. A lot of space now taken by Aurora. And Pat's the left to make decisions. Has to jump down. Maybe with the right timing. No! Oh, but the little jump of the ledge does not quite connect the spray. A result, an opportunity at hand. Beltronic, there's honestly nothing you can do. There's so little money here for Paravision to work with because, again, no loss bonus. They lo they won the last round and there's no choice but to say maybe an upgrade can be found. But that is about it. Ooh, got lucky there, but there's still chance for him to be taken down. That's the location known. Now, there's only two left alive. The money's not great for Aurora. They probably won't want to force the issue on this one. Actually, I say that Ooh. does manage to get one. Not able to save that orb, though. Making it expensive, but doesn't particularly matter to Aurora. The money and the cash flow are already rolling for them. Pyrovision, they've conceded. They've let Aurora get five already, and that's a position that you don't really want to let them have any more. They go even, or they go positive at the half here. So, actually, Aurora, very, very strong position in the overall battle here. And Paravision, timeout, very much needed. They are burning through them early on, but rightly so. They can't really afford to let much more go here. You'd like to see them win the next five in a row to be comfortable with their half. Somehow, I don't see that happening. Especially with the money that's on them right now, they are going to at least concede that sixth. Uh, it's a very, very strong T side at the moment. Already a couple of conversions and Millie Aurora bouncing right back after a loss is a very, very promising sign. Of course, this is their map pick after all. Yep. Oh, that is not the way to start it. There's not going to be anything found here for Pyrovision. Held at bay, forced back, and Aurora don't even really need to convert or capitalize much on these kills. They can just sit and toy with their food for a little bit. There's another one. Beltronic going to fall as well, and Alpha not long left for this world. Overrun, 
And just Art Frost, sole defender at this B site. So far removed from the situation. A Deagle might be worth saving. There's no armor with it, though. Maybe just an exit kill would be nice. Can scoop up an extra weapon. And maybe a lackey is going to be that person. But shot fired off. He knows he's there. That's the element of surprise gone. But it's a clean headshot. They're going to try to run him down. Though he's ahead of the flash. But it doesn't matter. Because he is not ahead of the bullets. That's the sixth round to Aurora. And this map going already off to a much better start. And actually, it seems to be going very much the same way that it went for Paravision last time these two teams played. In all fairness, though, early stages of Mirage, we all thought Paravision was going to have true, a landslide true. of half, and Aurora did get back. So who knows? If Paravision can get this buy round going and find conversions, then they can still get six in the bag. That's definitely not going to be an easy road. So far, Aurora has been explosive and very fast to rotate across the map, getting space going. And Art Frost, okay, has been pretty sharp up on that orb. Also on Mirage already... He was definitely one of the shining factors for Paravision. Definitely doesn't let the team down. Patsy then fighting with the player on top of pot. There's so much damage and yet again, it is Norway winning out the battle. The quiet player from Aurora stepping up big time and Kenzie to follow it up. It continues to break open this defense and no opportunity for a trade. None at all and... A little bit of damage extra done onto Kenti here. Alpha has been having so much impact, but unfortunately picks directly into the gun barrel of Deco. That's the op location known. Yiga does manage to find a sneaky little angle on him, but look at that result. Jump scares kick it. And Art Frost does whittle it down to the 1v1. Result gonna have a bomb plant uncontested here, and Art Frost gotta decide what to do. He's actually gonna push from main there. On the spot, hoping that there's a jump peak. Isn't going to. Has to dodge the barrage of utility. Spot him on the cross, but not able to scope in in time. Resol wins that one out. Gives them a seventh round and puts them ahead at the half. At the very least. Well, for us again, had to be the hero of the round. He did so much in the opening phase. But continuously, it is Aurora winning up the trade battles. Or kind of, you know, winning the the duels and then getting away without being traded. That's that's the problem that has risen here. Paravision again, no money in the bank, which means Aurora can just waltz on through. Nothing here to try and hold the bag. A little bit of a tag up on Norway, but honestly, shouldn't be too afraid. Yep. I'm afraid it is uh, Paravision's middle name right now, and especially Patsy was just had so many bullets headed his direction. Kenzie already accounting for Art Frost and this little bit of a attempt at a backstab here, but really there's nothing much that can be done here. This round already so far out of control in Aurora. They saw how map one went. They want map three, they want the reverse sweep, and they want to do it quickly. Electronic, that's a lovely shot to be hitting, but actually. In the scheme of things, pretty futile. Loses his life, loses the round. So what was it all for? Trying to hunt the last player down. Not going to be found, though. But Patsy, yeah, he has armor at most. No weapon. And a already secure eight. And I'm definitely... Starting to get a bit of a deja vu from last time. Aurora got eight back then. But that was CT side. T side is a completely different game, we assumed, but no, it doesn't seem to be the case. This is Aurora's map pick, and Paravision really seemed to struggle to find something to go their way. This is a must win here for Paravision. Four is pretty much a must in order to still get something maybe from that second half yeah though there's two rounds left if aurora can make this 10 to half then i really don't see much of a way back in for pyrovision it's not over till it's over don't get me wrong but there are some times that even there's a little bit too much copium for me to half deco nice opening kill 
And there is a trade coming on through, not onto him, but onto Resalt. Belchonic was so good on map one, positioning God, dare I say, but not finding quite the same level of success here. Have forced Aurora back, and they are going to head outside once more. There is a little bit of defense here, but Aurora has sort of been just allowed outside relatively for free. Kick it. It's not seen anything up close. That's a lot of information to pass on over to the team. They've got to have figured out by now where they're hiding. Beltronic's going to clear lobby clear as well, and suddenly they know exactly where Aurora are and where they are going. Again, there's a lot of pressure running on this round. Revision. Going to be making decisions. Patsy on the way. Opportunity had, but trade is there. And now Art Frost under a lot of pressure does hit the first. Oh, that was so close. Almost hit the second one as well. Quick thinking, but nope. Aurora gets away with it again. Nine rounds secured, and now there's one more round left in the half. Indeed, indeed. And regardless of how this goes, we did talk about how nine three halves can swing quite far in the other direction sometimes, but really... Parafishin going on to T-side loop. This is not favorable in the slightest, even if they do manage to get this. There's only so much 9-3 curse, Zonix law that we can try and invoke here. And actually, we were super excited to see Paravision on this map, and Patsy taken down by the P90 of all things. That is going to be an uncomfortable one. And they just mow this team down. Art Frost, the last one, trying to make a final stand. Taken down. It's going to be a 10 to half. We're going to be heading to a little break and we are going to see how this map closes out.
time for half number two. It's Aurora honestly stomping on this second map. The first one was a bit lackluster, but now everyone is bringing everything out of the bag in order to bounce back and take us to a third. It's so promising here that Aurora is able to get 10 rounds up on T side, and now they just need three more to close it out. Paravision's only hope here is a bomb plant and even that i don't think is enough i really don't think they can afford to concede this pistol round um we saw them win both pistols on map number one if they don't win this pistol round this map could be over in a matter of three rounds and actually it could be i could see it being so especially with aurora on the ct side they've got a lot of presence over towards this a site and if kenzie can get a kill here even just one might be the start that they need backs away from the flashes Actually, it's going to be Deku getting the first kill. But it's halted Paravision oh. completely. Patsy finds one. Deku looking the wrong way in Paravision. They are storming the site. Kenzie desperately holding on. Runs out of bullets, however. And it's Lackey. 1v2. Here's it being planted. They have no idea where he is. They can probably have a little bit of a guess. Here's the bomb getting planted, but hasn't gone down. Knows it must have been a fake. So has a bit of room to work with. Actually, it's got a bit of a timing here as well. Oh, and he can come from a very, oh, unknown angle. But now at the same time, uh-oh. Yeah, it got a bit awkward. Lackey couldn't quite hit the shot. He had free range on Belchonok, and unfortunately, it didn't quite happen. Now, Paravision with a pistol round under their belts. Let's see how far they can get a combat going. Looks like, though... Aurora is not keen on sitting still. A force by coming through here. This is a very Aurora move. We saw them do this a lot over on Mirage, map number one, for those of you who are just joining us. Um, and unfortunately, it didn't work out for them. Deco, really good on the AWP. Not quite an AWP in his hands here. It is a scout, but whether it works is another matter. Patsy, however, annihilated by the HE grenades there. And that is a little ray of hope here for Aurora themselves. Nor we hiding in the smokes there. Actually managing to stay alive, but Paravision going to cross over into secret unharmed. Well, those of them still alive at least. Lackey waiting, having a little bit of a jump squat here. Does have to be careful because there are AKs on hand. Ooh, I think he might have spotted something. Shuts the door, runs away, calling for reinforcement. Now Kicker might get the jump here. Ooh! Just spots Norway and can come over to his teammates that he's there. And that's going to be the equalizing kill. Kicker now going to be taking on this A site. Him versus the world. And Deco with only the scout to try defend. That's going to be very tough. He needs back up very soon. Now fire on the back of the side. Hits the tag. But it's only a tickle. And now just can see a deagle. He's going to be rushed down as well. I, I think <laughs> Alpha spotted him. It's just like, you know what? I'm going to get back. I'm not going to peek that. And there we go. Wrap around from Beltronic pays off. Escape Everyone, ladder? Everyone. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It says escape ladder <laughs> on it. There was no escape in that one. But yeah, this is definitely not the start that Aurora would have hoped for. They would have liked to have closed this one out by now. But Paravision, it all starts here. Slowly, slowly trying to close what was a humongous gap. But... They are on an eco now that will be allowing Paravision to probably get a fifth here. And that is at least half of the rounds they need to tie this up. Aurora, I'm going to be interested to see what they're doing. They are just going to be stacking heavily outside. Actually, it would be quite nice if they had the weaponry to defend it. But they unfortunately do not. Patsy just going to be pushing on forward. Double checking that there's no one secret. A little bit hesitant. That's the backup here of Alpha as well. And they are just going to mow down Aurora outside. There is nothing to stop them. My lord, Alpha's doing a lot here for the team. Patsy hopes to help out. And Alpha is the one to lock it in as well. 12 kills for him. And Paravision will find five. So at least rounds are double. Now even a little bit more added to that. Now we're at the halfway mark for them to get to a tied up scoreline. Still a lot more to be done, but it's good early signs and maybe Nuke turned into a T side map? I I'll be honest with you. The T side nukes that I've seen recently have been um very strong. 
And I don't want to call it seaside because technically the stats still do say that it's seaside, but like, just generally speaking, seasides, at least the games I've casted, have always felt a little bit more prominent. Oh, <laughs> the nade! Oh, you hate to see it. A Paravision now getting bullied left and right. Art Frost tagged as well. Can't even escape out of hut. And you have someone like Alpha who's now also tagged to half HP. Just hopes to sort of divert attention upon him to create space for the rest of the team. But that's not going to happen. There's simply too many Aurora players still left alive. Yep. Too many Aurora players left alive and Paravision. Players that are still alive, some of them are distinctly are hobbling through this round. Art Frost 23 Alpha, between the two of them, they almost make up a full HP bar. And this is the round that Aurora needed to stop the momentum. Now it's not going to stop the money that Parafish should have in the back pocket to immediately rebuy. But it is the snowball coming to a halt before it starts to cause a bit of an avalanche here. Kika might want to go down with a little bit of a fight here. No, you're going to have to be careful. Spotted out, but gets the wall bang. Up Frost and Alpha both low now. Just going to be hiding, trying to save these weapons. Yeah, there we go. There's the round over and done. Power of Vision, they are just going to be keeping hold of this. Uh, there is quite a bit of money available for Aurora, but they are not going to want to needlessly throw any of this away. Hunting ghosts in the likes of Power of Vision, knowing that the rest of the team will be able to buy up anyway. They're going to be up against a full gun round, whether they get those final two kills or not. And that is a 11, two off the win, one off at minimum securing overtime, which still very, very far on the horizon for Power of Vision. But they're actually uh, starting to bring it back a little bit. They need to stop Aurora from converting off of this round, however. Um, they've really not got much opportunity left available to them. There's no chance for them really to even be limit testing here. They have just got to try outright keep winning. Deco just going to back away there. And outside, just an area that no team has been wanting to touch. I'd love to see a really aggressive play. Someone try to take early control outside, get ahead of the rush, but... Actually, both teams just going to be sitting on their hands a little bit. Lackey going to be trying to push lobby. Actually, no trade coming out here. Deco slowly peeking the corner. Not going to get the kill. Switches to the sidearm to get the job done. Actually, another Molotov there to try buy some space as Resolt shoots through the grates and takes a player out. Technically, a wall bang, more of a ceiling bang. Kenzie has a tussle of his own on his hands here. As Patsy rears around the corner. Clean headshot to take him down, though, and Power Vision. This round's looking in their favor right now. Oh, Deco did spot a player, and this is now good. Resalt and Deco to play together, but they need to get a bit more going in their way. Alpha is met with death as he walks into the crosshair of Resalt, and that means it's just Art Frost. He's been a hero in the old before. Can he do it again? Very much has the opportunity to hear Deco going to need to try get the drop on him. The moment this utility is thrown, that's going to be the angle known Battle of the Sniper Rifles. Who dares? And Art Frost can just hold this position for now. They ran the corner slowly. Baits out the shot. He's trying to push up. Switch over to the AK. Nice little pick up there. But Art Frost up close, up personal. And that gun barrel pointing at his head. It's a no scope to secure them the round. And what a clutch it is. Paravision keeping their dreams of closing this out in two maps alive somehow. That means there's another chance for Paravision to crawl back. But it's still not going to be easy because Aurora has plenty of cash left in the bank to re-buy. Even Nope in the hands of Deco. Want to get aggressive here outside the fight you were hoping to see. Patsy did already spot one. Hopes for maybe a bit more. Now there's a couple more. Oh, and he saw both. In fact, there's a lot of information travelled over for both four to the orb of Deco. Now Art Frost, the one who's been making magic on the orb, 
Maybe he can deliver again, but it's so difficult to try an entry with an orb. The rest of the team... I mean, we do have Kikit, who somehow made it to secret. I think he managed to get through the vent. Ooh, oh, well, that's the timing. Okay, maybe you just need to get one. You're maybe not going to get another. Oh, no. He's oh, this is so thing. awkward. If he died right. there, that would have been hilarious. Uh, but decides to finally stop toying with our hearts. Uh, beautiful flash onto Norway. Nothing going to come up of it, though. Resort here to back up as well. Let's smoke a little bit deeper than necessary to stop either of these players. But they're heading down secret. Where Lackey awaits for them. Time will be of the essence here. Though. Oh, and the timing is good. Norway continues the delay. Now we'll fire things up for Paravision. Then a lot of pressure up on Lackey. Halts the ground up on this lower bomb site. Wrap both of them. That flank was not even necessary. He does wonders. And he brings Aurora to 12. Indeed he does. That is the round that they needed. And it's a little bit closer than they would have liked it to be. But it doesn't matter because it's a round nonetheless. And there is little to nothing. There are sweet nothings to defend Paravision from map number 3. And Aurora, just one more push needed. Uh-oh, time for a rush. They want to get it over and done with. But Kika does strike back with two. Oh, and in fact, it's quite back and forth. Art for us again here, the one to be in the clutch. One versus two. Bomb dropped right beside him. But being held by Kenzie is a bit deeper up towards ramp. So choices here to be made. Maybe slow things down. Play with the minds of Aurora a bit, but technically, it could be granted two individual fights. Two individual fights is what is needed and may have the chance to go for them. Does have to pick up that bomb, which has uh, taken quite a chunk of time off of the clock there, but the A site, you said, isolate these 1v1s and they have been handed to him on a silver platter. Let's have to get a move and a shmove on, though. Second guessing himself a little bit here. Very, very worried about this player coming from behind. Unfortunately, that window of opportunity slowly closing. As Kenzie closes in on him. Closes it out. That is the 13th. And that is going to be the round. That is going to be the map. And that is going to be Anubis as a decider on its way shortly. Oh, that's going to be exciting because last time around we didn't get a final map. Now we're going to be going all the way. And Anubis for that is a bit of a question mark because yeah, we haven't seen them face off. Honestly, it could go either way, but I think that Paravision didn't uh, manage to keep up that momentum between maps. Whereas there was, man uh, it was a very hard reset for um aurora coming into this they managed to uh they didn't win map number one they had a really nice reset they came back really strong they absolutely stormed the first half they struggled a little bit to close it out towards the end there uh but still very nice scoreline coming out if they are able to keep up this pace or just have a nice little reset and come into this with as fresh a mind and attitude as they did in map number two this will be a one-sided affair power vision they're starting out on the t side i can only imagine that they won the knife round however so they have been gifted this advantage but genuinely anyone's game here Actually, mid being completely left alone by Aurora, and they are just going to slowly creep on up. When they realize just how much space they have is another matter, and Aurora at some point are going to realize that the extremities that they are holding on to actually not where they need to be worried about. Everyone being extremely patient. Paravision creeping through middle. Try to abuse the fact that it has been left open. Deco met with an opportunity though. So it looks the right way. Alpha falls and immediately, uh-oh. 
Norway is not looking the right way. And that means kills go back and forth now, trying to keep the CTs at bay. But I guess, well, not quite. Deco finds another one to the mix. And it keeps the T's busy. They want to fight for more. They want to get a kill going before they can get the bomb plant in there. But it looks like every opportunity will be denied. Now Art Frost up against Resold and Deco. The powerhouse duo. And it's Deco to grab four. What a massive pistol round coming out of Aurora. What a start on the CT side. Them being unable to take down Deco there lost them the round. Um, they they had every opportunity they could have overwhelmed, but they just let him play around the cave just for a second longer than they should. He gets a 2k at the end even to close out, bringing up to a total of four kills. I believe we did have Kenzie has uh, been forcefully removed from the server. So unfortunately, uh, or maybe fortunately, depending on how you look at it, we've got two Norwees for now. But that does mean that we will be having a little bit of a timeout to make sure that he can get back in. Get ready. Again, CS2 and Tech Issues name a more iconic duo. But yes, very nice round there from Aurora, just dragging Paravision out. They get too hungry for those kills because, of course, they work their way all the way through the middle of the map and they curled round. So they kind of had the bomb site, but they didn't really. Um, and whilst it has its advantages, they just struggle to get that bomb down. Aurora very hot on chasing them up. But we have everyone back in the server now. We have the timer once again ticking down. And the next round will be underway shortly. There we go. There's the reset. And there we go. Now we'll be getting into the round. Yeah, surely this should have been the fix. <laughs> Fingers crossed. You can hear the Fingers little click crossed. in the background. Yeah. I mean, Kenzie still hasn't bought up, which does make me a bit worried. Look at us being technicians. We're, we're, we're trying to diagnose <sighs> the issue here. Yeah, I mean, he is, is sort of like there moving back from his, his knife to his pistol, a bit back and forth. So he's alive. Should be in the server. There we go. There, we go. Up there now. we go. Yeah. All right. Time to get Put that second round on the way. We got yeah. this. We got this. Um. But no, beautifully handled there. Wonderful, wonderful team of League Ops in the background making sure that everything is up to scratch and that these teams can play fairly. Now, or they have a chance to convert. There was not a bomb plant for Paravision, so all they have is a Deagle, a couple of P250s here and there. And Patsy, going to take a tiny, tiny bit of damage there. Only one HP from that Molotov. And nobody quite close enough to hear, I don't think, either, so... I'll be allowed to slink away quietly. Resalt. I'm lucky. They've got a lot of bodies headed their way. Dynamic Duo gonna have to hold the site down here. Actually, Deco has been moved across. They've cleared so much of the map out. So they know they have to be hiding around here. And actually, between the two of them and that beautiful flashbang from Deco, they are just going to clean house. Alpha, the only one left alive. And it is a night-on flawless round. Albeit up against the likes of pistols, but those are the kind of rounds that you like to see Aurora keeping a handle on as well. Not letting Paravision get any sort of foothold. We talked about them needing to come into this just as strong as they finished out map number two. And it seems that they're off to a good start here. Two rounds in a row with Aurora grabbing uh, 4Ks on, well, two different players. But still, good start. Now let's see what it's going to be like up against Paravision with four AKs and then a scout upon Frost. Not the best start. Kit could immediately take down to 41 HP on the back of a nade. And now getting smoked up as well. It's very early aggression coming through from Aurora. A lot of space being taken. And just no way for them to answer back. No, they've not really been able to find an answer, but it is early days. They are still trying to figure out just the limits of what Aurora is set it up for them, what they have got cooking in the background. Actually, Norway's struggling to get the kill there, and it's going to die because of it, but it goes both ways. Deco there to trade. Alpha in canals, looking a bit left, looking a bit right as well. Not quite sure what to do. Kenzie has managed to pick up and scoop up that AK and upgrade. Art Frost on this scout, not the most ideal of weapons. Trying to push towards B. Mm. 
another smoke there. Another good chunk of delay. But everyone's grouped up here though, ready to just wait for that to fade. They still have two smokes, they have a bunch of flashes to try and burst through. Two players here to deal with. Both though in a bit of a similar spot. So either they can help out because she can sort of fight and trade one another out very easily. But she can also line up if the timing here is wrong. Flash in the face for Deco in the U Falls. I mean, Kenzie is up to the test. But no, Alpha goes big. Has been massive on the multi frags on the previous map. And he delivers again. Not much that can be done here, especially with Alpha finding that lovely pick. He has been the tip of the spear this round. Three of the four kills they found already in his name. Now, result, result, not able to have found anything on the scoreboard just yet. Not a death, not a kill. Flat and solid, 0-0 zero, zero across the board. Now just has to try hold on to this weapon this round. Very much out of his control. They are kind of going looking a little bit for the weapon, just making sure that they have an out of this site. Far enough away that it should feel fairly comfortable. There you go, there oh, is the like first round. First round on the board. Looks like yep. Rizal can hang on to his rifle. So, at least that is something to work with. And I think they can squeeze by here. It's not pretty, but you're right. They can squeeze by. Um, as well. A lot expended early on. Trying to keep hold of this mid as well. Trying to blow up in the smoke. See if they can find any kills through it as well. And they will not. Spread out a little bit. They are just leaving this B site alone early round at the moment. Seems to be working quite well for them. Alpha dodging the flames, holding onto the ledge for dear life. And Alpha once more going big with these openers. Ooh, almost a gap there to work with, but on the same time on the back, resold can spot Patsy, but is immediate traded. So Pressure continues to arise. Still an advantage here for Paravision, but players are quite low, so maybe they're hesitant to go for these fights. But now with a bomb planned under their belts, they definitely got a fair shot of winning this round. Kenzie and Norway low on money, and it looks like they decide to just back off. Yeah, just save and hold onto those weapons. Money is not in a place that is nice for you right now. No, we might face a little bit of opposition here. You can see Opfrost toying with it, actually just going to back away. Probably for his own safety and for the good of his team as well. You have to be careful though, because they've got to find a way out of this site. Actually, they are just going to be heading back towards T-Spawn there. So no confrontation will be found. Fire efficient second round to close up that gap. The money on the ropes here for Aurora. Should be an ability to take a third round. Or at least have a little less resistance on the path to round number three for them. Yeah, there's not going to be any buy coming out from the rest of those Aurora players. Paravision actually building up a little bit of bank in the background. I only just noticed Art Frost on six and a bit. Kicker on five. Beltronic also almost on five. And that is a strong position to be in because even if they lose a round, they've got a nice buffer to bounce right back as well. Beltronok, a lovely opening pick. Lackey trying to pick up the slack. Actually finds one, finds a second, gone a huge there. That is exactly what his team needed. It's individual stepping up. Going to take a lot of damage from that HE and Beltronok pushed up nice and close. Keeping him on his toes, but has that bomb and that bomb's now been dropped. That is yeah, a but timing. A place to lose it. Timing was everything there. As the smoke fades, opportunity arises. But Kicker does find Lackey. But this is getting a bit weird because now we have CTs pushing quite far, in fact. Not quite hitting the timing on someone like Kicker. And the bomb is still there. So you would assume Patsy is then the one, for example, to go and pick that one up. Oh, but this is so crucial. If Kicker can grab one more, if he hits a timing here, this can be everything. Oh no, he's being held, not looking the right way. Expecting him to already be in mid, but not the case. And now it's just Patsy yet to frag. It's a bit of time at least for him to work with. Two players without armor. 
Yeah, two players without armor, but still numbers disadvantage and time not on his side here either. Does finally have the bomb, but 18 seconds to get on and plant, especially with Kenzie up so close. I mean, the perfect position to deny this here as well. Gonna plant out in the open, unfortunately. Kenzie gonna win that one out every day of the week. Clear line of sight, clear shot, all that he needs. And that is the third round for Aurora, stopping Paravision, putting too much together here. They do need to be able to convert, though. We see both of these teams on their respective maps struggle to do this. So hopefully, this is where we see a change of pace. Now, Aurora, they have that all out finally. Something we've not really seen a whole lot. And actually, it's coming out for both sides here. Clash of the Titans. So far, pretty back and forth. Yet again, another big round up to come. Low money on Paravision. Some a bit lower on, on Aurora, but I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem if they lose this round. Oh, my, well, they certainly will lose the opening fight. Alpha just walks out. No one there to back him up, though. No Util, nothing. And with that, an easy trade to be found, and things immediately slow down. Art for us caught in, uh, caught in the act in the middle of middle part of the map Means and sure Beltonic is she creeped through but it's still a very awkward spot here to be in trying to entry kick it's still very hyper fixated on the flank but they haven't properly cleared everything out yet this play is very very close a lackey can punish result to help out and it looks like this round is gonna crumble. CTs are gonna be swarming to site any second. It needs a massive clutch coming through from Patsy, but it's not gonna happen. That was really weird because Alpha had such a good position and had taken such incredible space, but the team just didn't really trade and wasn't as close up and playing together as I'd like them to see because Alpha took so much space that they didn't capitalize on. They could have had that bomb site and that bomb down so, so much earlier here. And they just don't. And then Result winning that fight out in mid as well. Suddenly, Paravision, all mo like momentum that they had that could have just won them the round. Just, they don't. They actively push the brakes. Um, bit of an interesting decision. Maybe a little bit of a miscommunication. I can't help but feel. Maybe they weren't quite ready for Alpha to go uh, as hard as he did, but... Alas, they've got a chance to try right their wrongs. It is all Galils and rifles across the board, but not much utility to be seen. Up for us to smoke at a Molotov, but that is going to be it for the whole team for the whole round. Well, trades are there yet again. And the force is likely to play a bit more passive off of the site. Here's Yuto flying, so it does get him a bit tempted because Rory can't help out and he stands his ground. A lovely first kill to be had for the Util and my lord, it is perfect. Resod holds the flank and no one is setting foot on this A-bomb site. Nope, closed for business. Aurora, they are coming back into it. They let Paravision get two rounds, but they won't let them get any more. Arthros putting up a good final stand here, actually. Gets two, switches over to the AK as well. 40 seconds to work with, and has the bomb, and now has two isolated 1v1s, one on each side. Deco repositioned with this AWP. Actually, you can tell Arthros not 100% sure where he wants to go. Does have to be decisive sooner rather than later. It might be. Actually, I'm not sure. I'm gonna go for this A site, actually. The steps, though, he has to run is gonna be heard. That does mean the resort is gonna be ready and waiting for him. Not gonna check the corner. No time, no hope. And Aurora, they eat that one up every day of the week. Art Frost, if he'd just been a little quicker, more decisive on going towards the site, could have stood a chance there, but unfortunately, left it too late. No chance to check the corners there. No, things are already kicked, the, uh, kicked off, of course, with the early advantages gained within the round. And that means Paravision's money is running dry. Nothing they can do but just buy up a couple of greater pistols and that is it. Maybe, you know, but it's something like a Tech-9 and the Eagles. We've seen a couple of cheeky kills before. I can at least make it a bit costly on the side of Aurora. 
But the more rounds they're going to be farming, the more... Oh! Oh, dominant this can get. Three kills coming out of Nori, the quiet player for Aurora. It really shows everyone is able to stand up. And this is insane. They've already locked in six. But how this is super T-sided? Not really a good sign coming out for Paravision. No, it is not... This is exactly how we saw map number two with Nuke going as well. Just saw Aurora run away with themselves on that first half, and it gave them such a difficult job to claw back. You actually posed me this question um, before map number two, before Nuke, wasn't it? It was, you know, does starting on T-side, how do you feel about that on Anubis? Do you think, you know, um, get the rounds on the board as quickly as possible, or do you want to close it out on that? Uh, and I said to you, get the rounds as early as possible. Now, Aurora's actually doing that on what is deemed the less favorable side, which is a really, really worrying sign for Paravision. But on the flip side, if you're an Aurora fan, you're probably loving life right now. Absolutely. Aurora, of course, the favorites here to win. The team that has been dominating. And thus far, has, uh, has dropped only... Uh, one best of three since being in the higher group of the group stage. Indeed. So the results certainly are there. But today definitely has been a tougher ordeal in comparison to the first time these two teams have met. And it's another opportunity for Paravision to try and get back. Oh, aggressiveness coming through from Paravision. So many players are waiting the doors and sure, Flash is heading their way. Aurora trying to get ahead of the situation, but nope, it gets denied. Aurora lose the opening. I hope to maybe find something back elsewhere, but no one's in water. No one's home. Oh, never mind. <laughs> they do catch Patsy. So, numbers are made even. In fact, maybe a bit of a mistake with, you know, Aurora are so keen every single time to try and get the numbers even again. Try to get a bit of an advantage going their way that maybe they could have predicted them to uh, wrap around but Paravision being so clumped up on one part of the map no one there for example to help up Patsy on his flank yeah true and help is definitely something that he would appreciate uh, has been left hung out to dry a little bit by his team at times but Kickert finds one there is a trade neither on the players that are involved in the conflict but to and back and forth, Art Frost going to be the one to try and make a difference. Shut down. Bomb tapped. Kenzie going to give away the location with the spam. Trying to bait them out. And Deco, difficult angle to fight this from. Actually just going to smoke himself off and fall back a little bit. But Kicker round the corner. Headshot machine. And Art Frost to finish this one on out. Lovely from the two of them. And of course, Lodronok, we can't forget his contributions to this as well third round trying to keep this gap close make it as easy as them going on to the rest of this but aurora already going at worst even at the half with three rounds still left to go but money is in a, an interesting place for both of these teams right now they've got one more buy each um and actually quite a bit of money on the side of aurora to fall back on here but they've had a couple of nice gun rounds The struggle, of course, we've been seeing throughout the entire best of three is really struggling to fight conversions. So there's a lot of pressure here riding on, on Paravision to find another round back to back. And even that wouldn't quite break the economy of Aurora. Because it's more so just to try and bridge the gap that is still between the two teams. And my lord, Patsy's still yet to frag. That is, um, actually, wait, is he? Or is that because of the, the disconnect? Because, I mean, he does have eight deaths, so I assume. So that's a very rough. Prospect. He definitely hasn't been having uh, having a, a very rough day. Not like this. Not in this fashion. And he's getting caught off guard as well. Oh, need my finish him. He's almost about to walk into it. No! Oh, Patsy. Oh, this is not what you like to see. Not for Paravision. Another very tough loss to deal with. And now... They need to find a way back into the round. Yeah, Patsy having little impact on this. He's been taking a lot of space and he's been finding a lot of information. 
But that's not really been converted into round wins, as you can see. And unfortunately, the nade combo there, just not, not the way you want to go out. Veltronok held back by the Molotov. Aurora Gaming, they have the money for this util, and they've been so good with it as well. Somebody who praised them for a lot on map number one, even though they didn't quite close that one out. They've just been on point with it, and some of the... I want to see the utility damage ground. I'm very curious about the stats for this, because it's got to be pretty high for some of these players. Smoke to try buy some space, but in the meantime, teammates are falling left, right, and center. The flash is good, but it doesn't matter to Kenzie. He gets the first, is traded. Well, his teammates traded, sorry. Armfrost still battling. Snazzy little spin there as well, but he's lost the bomb. With only 15 seconds as well, he's lost all hope. Just has to try stay alive here. It's whether Aurora wants to push him or not, and I think they do want to send a couple of bodies at the issue here. Oh, they have so much money. Of course they can. It's, you know, the best case scenario to try and take it away. Almost the line up, but there we go. Deco takes the high ground and helps out. So, well done. Aurora bounce back, have the majority of the players alive. And now, of course, they the most important thing is they shut down Paravision after yet again another win for them. That's going to be troublesome for their economy. Pretty much forced to eco, so they have enough money for the last round of the half. Yep. It is not the nicest position to be in. Finishing off the half on this decider map with naught but pistols and utility. Well, next to nothing in sight. A flash and a smoke. And that is not going to get you very far on a map like Anubis. Especially with results so up close here as well. Has to be careful not to be overwhelmed there. And Giga finds a lovely opening shot. Holds down the trigger. Manages to get two as well. The spray control is elite. Gonna back away from the flash there. For a bit of a nade to put some more distance between them. Note that they've got to be rearing and gearing up to hit this A site. Actually, they have managed to get Belichonok up into mid, but he is now trapped. No matter where he goes, there is a player. Not gonna live through that. Art Frost also taken down. Alpha left alive, and there is so much to do, and that nade doesn't help. Peaks the corner. Resol takes him down. 8-3. One round left in this half. 8-4 would be an attempt at redemption, but still Paravision struggling. This last round here is, is a must. Paravision need to get something going. If if not just for their own confidence to get going in the half number two. Of course, yeah, this was just with a uh, go up against mere pistols. So, a relatively easy affair for Aurora. Better keep it clean. That's the most important part. Oh, and I love this. Aggressive behind the smoke. And they're going to have another player, secondary orb, to get aggressive as well. It's so, oh, it's such a beautiful, thought out procedure. An uphill battle awaits Paravision. This is map number three. They took map number one in Aurora Gaming. They want the reverse sweep. 9-3 at the half. It's on the tip of their tongues. But Paravision, can they bring this back? 
and a pistol round. That's certainly the way they need to start. They lose this, and Aurora so, so close to victory. Rito can hear the footsteps. Comes over to Kenzie, but it doesn't matter. Kills go back and forth, however, and it's Rito to make the difference. Patsy on the site, actually going to take down the planter. There's nothing that can be done to stop him. Lackey does finally get the kill, but it caused enough chaos to buy his team some time. That bomb, however, is still going to go down. Beltron up close and resalt. Ooh. Just looks away at the wrong second. Peeks back. Alpha taken down. One of the front runners in this. And now just Beltronuk left in this round. And even he not long left for this world. All right. Double digits secured. This is all going very, very fast. And Paravision being up on CT site. This is going to be a very tough ordeal. This is pretty much just like trying to force... I reckon. Yeah. Or eco and then just hope you can crawl back from 11 for it. But that's very tough. Well, it looks like they do have the discipline in order to save. But my lord, is that going to be one hell of a battle? It's going to be very tough. And now let's see if Aurora can keep it clean. Yeah, keeping it clean is exactly what they need. They really will want to close this map out as quickly as possible. Here we go, all out firefight, utility rains down, Lackey leading the charge, gets the first there as well, as the backup of the team, but he's doing it all, Deco does steal away the ace at the last second, but that is a clean way to secure yourself at 11th, there wasn't much resistance to be said there, to be seen at all, but still looking very good from Aurora, they are done playing games, they are done letting Paravision have any sort of space to breathe, this is their map, and they want to put a stamp on it, seal it, and file it away. Slowly but surely, Aurora yet again set foot, or what is it, foot up on this A bomb site. Flash comes through, at least to clear the first corner. Patsy hears it. Kick it. Bit tempted to maybe turn around. Very little information. Are they fully going to commit? Well, it's going to be raining flashes soon. Patsy about to be tested. Oh! Well, it definitely works. Hits both of them. Kick it. Hits one who came through mid. And so far, everyone seems to fall. It's only Kenzie who is left. 1v2, it's not impossible. He's trying to get ahead of the smoke. This can be an angle that is not predicted. Alpha falls and another head granted. But Pelchonok has the information and has the better aim. That is another round on the board for Paravision. A very much needed round. That was a lot closer than they would have liked it to be, and I have a feeling Patsy, you know, with his little bit of an opener there, not going to be happy to see that it got as close as they did, because they got a 3k almost instantly, and the fact that it came down to a 1v1, that's a little bit scary, but Paravision needed that for the morale and to stop Aurora reaching map, and of course, serious point here. But able to buy it right back, utility not all there, but actually on even footing. Now, a little bit of a spam. They're trying to find something through the smoke. There is not going to be anybody waiting there, but nice little spread across the map, applying a little bit of pressure. Actually, this A side a little bit weaker than the rest of mid. Once more, they've just left undefended. Not particularly bothered about what Aurora choose to do with that space. And yet again, a very slow round coming through from Aurora. Uh, seems they do want to group up against, uh, or towards A this time around. Been favouring it. Have definitely 
felt closed last time around. Got down to a one versus one. So let's see how they're going to be dealing with this. Patsy in a bit of a different position on top of the site. And so far hasn't been clear yet. Good for one. Immediate trades back and forth we go. Aurora is an advantage though. One player. Oh, and lock it in even more. It's just Belchonok. Still a bit of a road ahead of him. Could be going for this. Because in a way, if you can deny Aurora's 12 round, that is massive. One player up in heaven. But no, Deco will deal with that. And even though, I want to say it's been a bit more of a quiet game. But that's just because Resalt is having 21 frags and only 4 deaths. It's absolutely nuts. Deco as well. Plus 2kd. Like, everyone is having an incredible game. Maybe with the exception of Kenzie here. But honestly, I feel like Kenzie is not really spotting too many people. Um, yeah, this was something that we saw, um, Par not Paravision, sorry, um, Aurora struggle with on map number one, is that they struggle to get the numbers up, they struggle to find frags individually, you can now see on Paravision side of things, like Patsy on four, both Alpha and Belchonok, also on just six as well, and considering we're 17 rounds in, you know, that's not really great numbers. Uh, you'd like to see them a little bit higher there. But on the side of Aurora, a lot more evenly spread. Everyone's stepping up. And you've got individuals popping off as well. It's not like the other players are doing badly. You've just got really, really standout players with the rest of the team being there to support, not just carrying. Yeah, and Lackey as well uh, for Aurora here. Lackey was bottom fracking last map, but now he is off the charge, adding another one to the list. Really saying, you know, Riesel, you've been top bragging. I want to challenge you. I want to end this map on a top bragging position. And, well, looks like he is grabbing his 22nd kill. Does need to be careful of Alpha. Still with a deagle in hand. Trying to make it a bit more dicey. But he gets tech low. Needs to divert away. And that's a bomb planned. Guaranteed. Patsy and Alpha need to stick together in order to try and prevent it from going Aurora's way. Lackey does fall. And maybe, just maybe, what can Alpha do? Absolutely nothing. It is Deco landing another multi-frag there to save Aurora yet again. A massive second half there as well. This was absolutely wild. Like, the second map, of course, new. We were already thinking, okay, Aurora's starting to feel spirit. And now here on Anubis, it really locked in.